Elimination Chambers, a few hours away, and we haven't done much because of me getting sick uh, a while back, but, you know, starting to get better day by day, so we'll probably do this as quickly as possible so I don't start coughing up a storm in this one, like we did, I believe, with the Hall of Fame thing, but, okay, uh, I think we've done a few ma talked about a few matches here, but we're going to go through them again very quickly. First off, on the pre-show, we have the unlikely duo of Barotis Clay and Tensai versus the returning duo of Team Rhodes Scholars. Uh, first of all, the, the show in Vegas overall uh, with Tensai and Barotis Clay was, was ridiculous. We finally got to see the return of the hip-hop hippo. Albert, but uh, it, it was still weird. Especially since, you know, during the past few weeks we've been seeing the matches of Naomi and Cameron on main event. And just then we could overall, Naomi, Naomi, I don't know why she has this gimmick. Cameron, it takes perfectly, but Naomi, I mean, should, should win Divas Champion by now, in my opinion. But you know what? It, it works. So I'm not going to bash it as much as I normally do because it actually works. As far as, the, as this goes, um, this match I really don't care about. Y you'll probably see Brodus win this one somehow. They're on a roll as of late. And with the you know distance of Road Scholars, I don't really see them winning tonight. But then this is the pre-show, so don't expect it to go that long anyway. Now, we have the Divas Championship on the line. Caitlyn, the new champion Caitlyn, defends against Tamina Snuka. This is Tamina's... First chance, I think, in a year. I believe it. In a year, ironically, her last title shot was probably at Elimination Chamber against Eve. I think it was Eve. I don't remember, but it was it was probably Eve at Elimination Chamber. What one thing I always stress about Elimination Chamber is they should have a Divas Chamber. As messed up as that sounds, and as probably far out as that is, that will probably never happen. It would be interesting in my mind to see what would happen if a Divas Chamber was involved. Especially with some of the toughest Divas, probably, you know, for example, like a Bath Phoenix, a Karma, a Tamina, Caitlyn, and just add two random ones, I don't know. Maybe Natalia and add a random one, like Alicia Fox or whatever. I mean, it could work, but I doubt it. As far as this match goes, go, goes though, I'm, I'm actually glad Caitlyn held, has won the title recently. Although Eve leaving was not the good part of it, uh, you know the Divas Champion has not even been used a lot as of late. I mean SmackDown for sure, but where else? Nowhere else. M maybe main event superstars. Who watches that? But as far as this match goes, to me, I don't think Caitlyn will lose the belt and be a transitional champion. I would like to see Tamina hold the belt, but I don't think that will happen. Unfortunately, at least not yet. Now we have the United States Championship. Tony Cesaro versus The Miz, which I think we saw in a pre-show. At the last pay review, the Royal Rumble. Um, honestly, I don't know why we're seeing this again, but uh, it's a good feud. You know why not? And The Miz, as of late, on main event, has been berating Tony Cesaro overall as a champion. Which is ironic because The Miz did almost the exact same things that Cesaro has been doing as of late. Leaving matches on getting counted out. Uh, arrogant. Son of a bitch. I don't know. But uh, at the end of the day, Cesaro will retain the title. I, I don't think he's ever going to lose this belt. I really don't. And I don't think he'll lose it now. I mean, this is The Miz we're talking about. He is, he is a former United States champion. He is a former Mr. Everything. But uh, I doubt that he will win this match. I really doubt it. Especially with the injuries of late. And again, we have the World Championship. Why do we have this match again? This is Sheamus and Del Rio all over again. I don't care who wins this one. All I care about is eventually Dolph Ziggler will cash in. And I think this is the last man standing. I don't really care. I really don't. This is stupid. Speaking of the chamber, though, 
we have a number one contendership elimination chamber where the winner will face the World Heavyweight Champion at WrestleMania. And, uh, you know, this chamber is actually probably the best in a while because these are former World Heavyweight Champions. All of them in their own right. I, I don't know if anyone rem remembers Swaggers, but nonetheless, former World Heavyweight Champions. And like the Rumble, you cannot predict who wins this, so I'll just give my thoughts on each one and see what happens. Uh, with Randy Orton, he hadn't been in the chamber match in a while. He hasn't actually been around in a while. So I doubt he will win this. I, I won't be shocked if he will, if he does, but I doubt it. Speaking of swagger, he's in this match, and uh, recently he has brought back Uncle Sebagaya. Who does, if you don't remember Sebagaya, you're probably not in the era of the Blue Brothers. Eli and Jacob Blue, a.k.a. the Harris Brothers, before they were in TNA. Long before they were in TNA. They were never a kind of coffee, but still with the, uh, you know, you know, you know, that was like the Bakaya as uh, Dutch Mantel, legendary, dirty dad Dutch Mantel. And I'm surprised that he has brought him back, <laughs> especially with the, uh, the uh, no guns look, apparently, with the racist redneck that we all know and love. This is a very interesting dynamic, though, with him being uh, Ziggler, uh, not Ziggler's, but uh, Swagger's manager, or whatever you're wanting to call him, advisor, maybe, great American comrade, I don't know what you want to call him, but uh, with Swagger, he can actually win this, with the return he's had as a late, the push he's been having as a late out of nowhere, he comes back out of nowhere and has this this championship match, or, or uh, contender match, but championship pending. This is going to be interesting with Jack Swagger. I, again, I mean, he has a better chance of Ort than Orton winning this, but again, I, I, he probably will not win. He, he might shock me, though. Uh, Chris Jericho also came out of nowhere at the Royal Rumble. And they have the weirdest, the weirdest picture ever for Chris Jericho. It, it looks hilarious on this little preview screen. <laughs> it doesn't even look real. What the fuck is that, anyway? <laughs> but anyway, um, you just got to see it for yourself. It's hilarious. Anyway, Chris Jericho, um, with the whole Ziggler thing as of late, he might win this one, and Ziggler might cash in at Elimination Chamber just so we have that match at WrestleMania. But <laughs> this fucking picture. I'm just going to move on. Jericho might win this, we'll see. Also returning, Mark Henry, out of nowhere. This fucking picture, holy shit. I'm gonna have to click this eventually and let this not let it be there. Uh, Mark Henry. Out of nowhere. Mark Henry might actually win this. I I, I would hate if he did. Because I do not want a sleeper, sleeper match for the world title. I really don't. I don't want to see Big Show uh, Mark Henry. If that does happen, I'm going to skip that match. That'll be my piss break pretty much. But uh, Mark Henry has always been impressive. And he might actually win this. I hope Del Rio retains or something happens. I don't care. No Big Show. No Mark Henry. And finally, the Tag Team Champions of the World. Uh, team Hell No. This might be a time where Kane and Daniel Bryan actually split up. This might be the match that people have been saying, Oh, they'll split up, they'll split up. This might be the match that it'll happen. But for all we know, Elimination Chambers are not... Four tag teams.